this is a dangerous group groups that we're dealing with now. It was a nightmare. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it in this week. Now, as usual, I'll give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it in first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it in, folks. So let's waste no time. Ooh-wee! Let's get to it! Story number one, Gerard is taking aim at the performing arts. City officials in Gerard proceed with seeking funds to improve the Wellman Theater after a 6-1 to one vote to purchase the building on West Liberty Street for $72,900 took place. That means they voted yes, they want to do this. Local communities are starting to notice the value of the old arts venues. Story number two, First Energy undoing their carbon wrongs. First Energy keeps its three-year streak alive by donating 300 trees to Mel Creek, Mel Creek Metro Parks in celebration of Earth and Arbor Days. Story number three, Will Melfi last in Gerard. James Melfi, the mayor of Gerard. James Melfi has been mayor of Gerard for 22 two years yes he's been there since i was delivering mail in gerard how long is that his reign will now be challenged by nine-year city treasurer and seven-year school board member mark zuppel now this is a story that reveals the triumphs and trials of a seasoned mayor versus a city treasurer story number four more renovations coming to YSU. The state controlling board has approved a total of $1.18 million for upcoming renovations for, y for Youngstown State University. The funding will be used to improve YSU's STEM building and Mosher Hall. Now, the improvements derive from House Bill 597. Story number five. Now's council has five candidates. Five Democrats are running for three now city council seats. The candidates include Lori uh, Hudzik, uh, Jimmy Julian, uh, Michael Lastick, and uh, Linda Marches, and Doug Slittle. Story number six. Youngstown is looking for an economic development director. Youngstown hasn't had an economic development director for the past 11 months and has, and has started to, uh, a search for the position. Uh, the position that was vacated by T. Sharon Woodbury last May has an annual salary of $69,343 to $76,000. And four hundred fifty dollars. The deadline to apply for the position is uh, four p.m. May twenty-second. Story number seven and the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Somebody said, "Ask me." You know, they say, Brian. You know, you could be doing anything else. Why are you doing this? You know, you're retired. You've served the country, you've served city, you've served other cities. Why come in and give your all giving the top eight stories? Folks, I have to let you know that there is some blue-haired, blue-haired kid out there. And they may, may need some direction. They may need... A hero, somebody that's bald headed with a shirt and tie on that's locally. So they call me up. They say, Brian, we need a hero. 
And I come flying in with my camera. And me and that blue-haired person, we start doing our dance. Oh, yeah! Because all they ever needed and all they ever wanted was love. And that's what the mediator does. Story number seven. Oh, yeah. Ooh Story number seven. 36 nonprofits to receive funds. Speaking of love, 36 nonprofits, nonprofits, baby. $693,000 in grant money has been awarded to 36 nonprofit organizations in Youngstown. This grant money will help a lot of local nonprofits carry out their mission statements with some much needed funding in these hard economic times. Nonprofits, that's all they have been doing is asking and trying to carry out the mission statement and they finally got a blessing. That's why story number seven made it this week. Big, big hit. Story number eight and the top local headline and developing news story that made it this week to keep you informed. As a yay high little child, I was born to be something. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I had the gift to be a messenger. I began delivering papers, and then I began delivering mail, and then I began to write, and then I began to publish, and now I'm here, bucking naked in my shirt and tie to give you the top eight stories that ooh, 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 that boy's got some soul is a story within itself story number eight the pressure is on in youngstown folks the pressure is on mm, it's been on what you gonna do the pressure is on youngstown officials to rebound in several categories the city has to rebound economically educationally politically and after the funeral of a 15 year old girl the city has to rebound emotionally from a violent culture stop it stop the kind of guns huh. at the moment youngstown is in a battle to keep the city's residents on a solid footing also the city cannot afford to keep losing population and young children and has to find a way to rest restructure some bad deals while also shifting the pendulum toward a better future. Youngstown also has to make some quick moves on the COVID relief spending. At the moment, the city does not have much time, folks. This story is still developing. Ah! Well, folks, those are our top eight local headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. I'll be right back with the top eight international headlines and developing news stories. So don't you go anywhere. You're the media to be Brian West. I'll be right back. The mediator. Big, big headlines. Big, big headlines. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week, folks. I hear they are bringing back psychiatric hospitals and they're trying to make a big, big comeback. There's still some still around. And uh, me uh, being uh, crazy like I am, I often find myself talking to uh, people that are uh, crazy, crazy, beyond no crazy, well, crazy. The other day I was at my store and a man pulls up to the window. He said, that a picture right there. Uh-huh, that a big picture. That's mold on that picture there. I said, ain't got no damn mold on That's a picture. That's art. He said, no, that's mold. Brother looked at me with a mob boss look. Got upset with me and pulled off. Everybody, I said, oh! I said, that brother might need to be in a psychiatric ward. Might be something wrong with him. Who would want to get upset with a nice, handsome young fella like me? You know, you got to be crazy. I love everybody, and everybody should show love to me. All my life, I've been 
surrounded by people who are possessed with demons and I've had to cast them out to get out of them there like Jesus and somebody always pulls up to me with some evil in them and I gotta go inside their soul and find the Joe Biden in them and pull it out and say get out of that young man or to go inside of the trunk spinning around and cussing and fussing I say no choke that mother politics has driven me insane maybe I will go into a psychiatric ward myself and sing songs of sweet, sweet melodies. Let's all take our medications and be high and merry. Hey, hey. Woo! Yeah. Well, I'm glad I was able to cast out some demons this Sunday morning. <laughs> Well, folks, that's our story for this week. Bringing back the psychiatric hospitals. Maybe I'll fill out an application and be a doctor <laughs> so I can cast out the demons. Let's get to it. Story number one. The next generation may be staging a rebellion against the education system. Speaking of demons, according to The Hill, Republicans requested the Education Department's plan on restarting student loan payments. Now, servicers are bracing for some trouble with more than 44 million accounts due to get turned back on this summer. Ooh, the story highlights a heated fight brewing between a heavily in debt next generation and a decaying generation that made the rules that means the olders and the new generation this could get nasty the story is still developing because somebody wants forgiveness and there's not much forgiveness less that's what's left that's why story number one made in this week story number two what do abortions and rainbows have in common hmm. abortions and rainbows uh-oh I can get in trouble for this story. No one wants to be called evil, but it's in all of us, folks. Some of us are just good at hiding it, and some of us are just good at bringing it out in public. Evil is everywhere. Contain the beast. Some people want a second chance in life, but in the process, they sacrifice precious life and gold. That means the precious gold of living a peaceful, natural life without sacrificing precious life because of your decisions. Some people are born with defects, which brings us to the main talking point about law, policy, and rights. BBC reports that the abortion battle could just be starting, and as the world's people continue to fight for top spots, every day, Innocent people never get a chance. How sad is that? Story number three, science and COVID-19. The Washington Examiner has a piece asking the question of why did scientific journals help China censor the truth about COVID-19? Uh-oh, this piece could be the beginning of what many expected that China is to blame for COVID-19. Uh-oh. This piece goes on. Well, the piece goes on to talk about how China's government ruthlessly, ruthlessly centered. They ruthlessly centered, censored. Ooh, Lord, that's, a, that's an even harsher word. They ruthlessly censored doctors and researchers who tried to tell the truth about the origins and early spread of the coronavirus. The story goes on to display a trail of research linking China to COVID-19. This story is still developing. That's why story number three made in this week. Story number four. Can you redefine money? Big, big question. One opinion piece in Fox News claims that the Biden administration is quietly planning for a future where we don't own our money. Mm. 
The article goes on to say that the Federal Reserve has started to lay the groundwork for a programmable, trackable, easily manipulated digital currency. Now, according to the piece, the Biden administration released a sweeping executive order that directed numerous federal agencies to crack down on digital assets, including on populate or well, popular cryptocurrencies, ah, as well as study the potential development of a central bank digital currency. Uh oh, Biden has some. They're doing something nasty here with the money. This piece goes on in detail describing what has been taking place under Biden's leadership. Uh oh, another conspiracy, baby. Well, folks, those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't you go anywhere. You're on the media. It'll be Brian West. I'll be right back. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M E T H O D, the number eight, INC.com. Method88.com, you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. Welcome back, welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. One of uh, my uh, customers uh, at the store, if you ever want to show some support, come into the store, 5648 Market Street in Bourbon, Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, one of my customers came in and uh, he was uh, sad, you know, Brian. <laughs> Nobody wants to work. That's new generation. They're on drugs, getting high, getting pulled over by the cops, fighting. They don't want to work. <laughs> I pulled him to the side. I said, buddy, I said, when I was in my marriage, I was being made a fool out of. And all I could think about was cutting the grass. I say, brother, I know what you're saying because work is what makes real people happy. <laughs> you sing while you're working. You think while you're working. Uh, uh. I'm messed up, but I'm still working, baby. <laughs> I'm still shooting my three ball. I'm still driving to the hole, and I'm 40 years old. I'm still running in the park, baby. Because I know that only work can save me. <laughs> yeah. If Michael Jackson um, didn't wear the Jerry Curl, brother, yeah. Then there wouldn't be people, little brothers and sisters, white and black brothers, moonwalking with Jerry Curls. Ooh, yeah. Whew. That's why you've got to work. Mm. Work, 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 baby. Yeah, I told my customer, my buddy, Frank, his name, I'm not going to put him out there, but his name is Frank. He comes in all the time, and he's a concern about the work ethic. He says, I'm tired of doing all the work by myself. I want to share the work with somebody. I said, Frank, get a jerry curl, baby, and say, hee hee, and start walking around. And get nasty with these nasty little gigolos. And they'll get up and do some work. They want to moonwalk to be famous like Mike, baby. Uh, uh, uh. Frank listened to me. He went out and got a jerry curl. Little white brother. When he got a jerry curl, got a jerry curl under his mustache. And I seen him playing basketball. And they was out playing. The, they like stuff like that in America. If you get nasty like that. You get nasty with your work. You got to talk to the tools while you're working with them. You got to get fired up about work, baby. Ooh. Whew. And at the end of the day, you go home. You go to bed. And you do it all over again tomorrow. <laughs> Joe Biden. Obama. I'm coming for you. Trump, you think you're old and think you're great, uh, but you still got to get to work, old brothers. Michelle, Oprah, all of them. <sighs> they think that they're just going to sit back and publish books and be happy. <laughs> <sighs> There's a new mediator in town baby and he's talking about getting lifted with work baby labor <laughs> and that's all i have left to do 
even when I have nothing left. Work. <laughs> I feel like working on. Let's get to it. Story number five. Why the media is moving all, oh, moving their chess pieces. Talking about work. Somebody got fired from their job. Wow. How sad is that? But don't stop working. Media has a way of shaping our attitudes and beliefs. Trust me, I'm doing it right now. The America, me, American media has seen some big names fall off of the mainstream platform in the past couple of years. Here's some names. The death of Rush Limbaugh, the axing of well-known underground InfoWars rebel Alex Jones, who's still on the radar. If I fail to mention all of them, forgive me, but there is a lot. So I'll just mention a few. Tucker Carlson of Fox News is gone. Don Lemon of CNN. Both of these analysts have been fired. Now the list of big names, some of which has, have also died. Uh, they've, they've died. This, this spans as far back as my birth date. We can even, even if you want to get uh, even even some of these uh, other ones, you've, you've got people like Diamond and Silk, uh, some of the TMZ folks on all channels, all radars from all walks of life, analysts, axed in the media. Even the Murdoch family has been in some headlines. Some of people have even, you know, who knows, some of them are underground. Now, when soaking in the current vibes and circulation, it's important to understand why the media is making these changes, which has a lot to do with outside pressure, money, and the current culture shaping current political stories. The story is still developing with some well-known faces on the sidelines. That's why story number five made it this week. Big me hit. Story number six, the economic disaster signs are in the headlines. The founders of Freedom and Justice for All, the innovators and the providers that police the globe are being tested. That's the United States. U.S. businesses are in the, are in the fight for everything. They're in the fight in the capital arena. That's capitalism. Now, every dollar sign that keeps the economy going is being tested with consumer confidence still low and logistical operations like you. P.S. Flashing warning signs. The American economy is in yet another brawl with this uh, money system. Uh, there, we're in a brawl, folks, and this one has everything to do with the foundation. Will the foundation keep up or will it crumble? Let's hope it keeps up. But the American dream stays alive. So I story number six made it this week. Big, big headline. Story number seven and the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Keeping those top eight stories going as long as my little bit of money can pay the bills. My mom always told me, she said, Brian, you better do something. You can't be sitting around. You got to do something. So I'm in here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I feel good. I feel all right. Sometimes I feel upset. I feel down. But I got to get up and keep going. Story number seven. The dreaded gun debate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nine teens were injured when shots were fired at an after prom party in Texas. Current gun debates are not new. Since the explosion of gunpowder and the invention of the gun, there have been a trail of dead bodies brought on by other human beings fighting for territory, revenge, protection, and even rights. Now, what making gun, what's making gun stories so interesting now is the data on who is killing who. The data is showing that the most killings are by suicide, according to a Pew Research, according to the Pew Research Center. So people are even killing themselves. How sad is that? Why is life really that bad? Mm. Am I not making you happy enough? Off the happy juice. This was story number seven. I also made it to the top two this week. Big, big head. Story number eight and the top international headline and developing news story that I made it this week. Folks, all I'm trying to do is motivate you to do something with your time. I'm spending my time trying to motivate you to stay informed. If I mention any big names on this show, 
please, I'm not trying to be sued because I really don't have that much money left. My money often goes to things that improve other people's lives. So, folks, if I say something out of the ordinary to offend anybody, I, too, dream of having a jerry curl, moonwalking on stage with beautiful women grabbing me and telling me how much they love me. So, folks, what I'm trying to tell you is I'm human. That's my warning label, baby. So if I get nasty, you know that I'm doing it for the love of mediation and that mediation inside of me needs love too, baby. Ooh, yeah, let's get to this top story. Story number eight, U.S. debt default could be an economic catastrophe, says Yellen. U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen warned that if Congress fails to raise the government's debt ceiling, it could trigger an economic catastrophe and would send interest rates higher for years to come. If the government does not raise the debt ceiling, job losses, increased mortgage, credit cards, and auto loan payments could be the conclusion. U.S. businesses could all face deteriorating credit markets and the government will likely be unable to issue payments to military families and seniors who rely on Social Security, making this story a top priority. Folks, I am telling you, to think about me uh, when you're making this decision to raise the debt ceiling because we all need money and uh, Congress if you need me to cut the grass I'm sure my ancestors I have some Indian some black some white some other ancestral roots I'm sure they all played a big part in shaping this country if you need me just to cut the grass for a few dollars uh, I could stay in the back room if you need me to wash a few plates, I wouldn't mind being back on the payroll. Times are getting tight. Raise the debt ceiling for me. And what you can do is give all of the money to the mediator. I'll show you how to get this country back on track. Ooh, wee! Yeah. Well, folks, those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I hope you got some now today's program. I always get some now doing the research. As usual, I'd like to thank all the news outlets, the journalists, the people on the front lines, the media. You deserve all the credit. I'm just the media, the man in the middle. Folks, I'm trying to not fire anybody. I'm trying to hire and come in here with a smile. I'm hiring myself, working for free. So if you want to show some some love, some support here at Methane, it does not take much. All you have to do is visit the website on the screen, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, order a sponsor program, or just stop at the store at 5648 Market Street and buy something. It does not take much in Youngstown, Ohio, Boardman, Ohio, or Youngstown. It doesn't matter. Well, folks, I'm out of here. I'll be back next week. Look through over 200 or more stories to keep you informed. Thank you for tuning in to me this week with me, Mediator this week with me, Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediators here.